Hey guys, what's up? In today's tutorial, we are going to make a rolling techno kick and bass, basically. And we are going to even layer the bass so that it will be a bit more gritty, a bit more interesting. And we are going to use the kick as the source of the bass. Basically, we are going to use a reverb and delay and roll the things a little bit around to get that bass sound. And yeah, I think more or less that's what is going to happen for today. Uh, before we start with the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button if you want to get the notifications when we make a new video videos like this other than that let's just start i have already loaded a kick sample here and it actually sounds like this it's quite gritty kick already so i think we can make this work what i'm going to do now actually just to take a look at the length of the kick because when you want to have this kind of a rolling techno kick and bass then you have to be careful about the length of your kick so that you have space for your bass in this case I can clearly see that is a bit too long I will probably have something around here let's play it depends on your tempo at the moment we are in 120 we can definitely increase it around 127 maybe and we can even decrease a slight more Yeah, let's start with this one and see how it goes later on. The second thing that I want to do is actually create my second channel for my rolling bass. I think we can do a lot of stuff with the kick later on depending on the sound that we are aiming for. At the moment I would like to just see how the uh, rolling bass sound then we can come back to kick and shape the sound a bit further. So what I'm going to do is actually create another audio channel but in this case we are actually going to use the kick as a source of the audio and we are going to put that in. So if I solo this one now, and to make it a bit more easier, let's put a delay so that we can hear what's going on. Let's put on 100% wet and put it on to 16 knot. So basically this channel gets the audio from kick and uh, because we are we have put a delay on top of that so we are just hearing the delayed version of the kick so we are using this channel to create the rumble the reason that i had separated them into two channels to make it a bit more easier to follow up later on if you want to change something only with your uh, rumble then you can just change the this channel let's call this one as rumble or the, let's call it rolling bass And make it like this one and then you can actually play around a bit the way you want it so what i want to do here actually put this on the low ground so that we have this greedy base on the background something like this and then i am going to group them together this will help us in the future when we take take a look at our levels if and if or if we want to use kind of any further effects like um, glue compressor or compressor limiter whatever or distortion even we can just put it here so we are applying the effects on both of them basically however in this part here i would like to have a bit first of all um, reverb so that we can get it a bit smoother or these drum hits could be a bit smoother if we just use a slight reverb here. And let's put this in the dark mode. And I will definitely use kind of distortion to make this a, even a bit weirder. And let's aim for maybe amplifier and see what it does or if, if, if it works. Let's put the utility to just to fix the volume. Let's put an uh, auto filter so that we can actually cut off all those weird high end. Let's put 
let's group them together so that we can a b so you can definitely see what it does it also glues up a little bit the sound as well let's get this off Out. Wait. Let's put another utility just to gain stage a bit more. Something like this. So at the moment I feel like my kick could have a little bit more body. So let's take a look what we can do with the kick. Or let's make the kick a bit more clear. What I mean by that is actually let's get a compressor side chain it to the kick so that when the kick hits we are decking all the effects so that we can actually hear the kick a bit better and to do that actually you just pick the side chain here and then you pick the kick and you are going to go for the prefix you can actually use post effects here as well but i want to have this rope kick sound to side chain from let's put the ratio all the way up play with the release a bit release a bit The one thing that I would like to do at this point is actually telling the compressor start ducking before the kick hits because we want to have the kick to cut through the mix. So if you pick this option here, 10 milliseconds, so this will start ducking even before kick hits. So kick will be even more, or kick will even more pop in the mix basically. Without. much easier to hear the kick basically. If we go back. At this point it depends on the taste of the artist because you can go all the way down and make it really super clear so you ex can exaggerate the, that sucking effect but if, from my perspective I like a bit more like in the middle ground somewhere here. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's go back to the kick and play with it around a little bit so that we can get the kick a bit more interesting. I just want to have a cut here. I feel like it's a bit too rush. Something right here as well, a bit boost. I feel like this kick can use a kind of a drum bus just to compress the sound a little bit and see how it works. And we can probably make it a bit darker in that sense as well. Let's let's try. just makes it a bit uh, richer on the high end it is what I don't want I want this kick to be a bit darker and what I'm going to do at the moment is actually try to use some kind of pedal to see if I can distort the sound without distorting it too much
a slight difference, but I still like it. Um, I think it gives this kind of a nice feeling to it. At this moment, I would like to check a look on over the levels and how they both look like actually on the group. So what we can do based off, we can put a glue compressor here and play around a little bit. We can increase, decrease probably attack and increase the release a bit. The soft clip as well. And now I would like to take a look at the limiter and see the levels there. At, th at this moment, I would like to use actually Perl so that actually you can see on the limiter how they look like. We have this kind of nice shape over here. We can, depending on the test, increase the sound of a bit here on the rolling bass. But I like this kind of a bit on the background feeling because we are going to layer that sound now. We can come back and see if it gets better or worse after layering. So what I mean by layering is actually putting kind of a ping noise or hi-hat or whatever it is, tuning it down. Or if you are putting ping noise, you can just use the low end of the ping noise, for example, and distorting a little bit and giving this kind of a sucking feeling to sound as well, so that it gets a bit more darker, weirder, and a bit more distorted as well. So to do that, actually, let's pick Let's try to find some type of ping noise, basically. It really doesn't matter at the moment what type of ping noise that is. What I would do, definitely go for my samples. Let's go for the Deep Premium Volume 3 from Production Music Live. I think they had kind of atmospheric noises. Let's take a look. This one... I think this can work. What we're going to do, actually probably put a simpler somewhere here let's put even in the drum here and go back to our samples put this here and let's make a note from this one let's solo first what we are going to do is actually start this from a bit earlier from this half of the loop so so it will create this kind of sucking feeling. So let's put it a bit up. So I would like to have something around here so that we can play it around because I'm going to cut this one most likely like this. So I would like to have something to use, which in this part sounds already quite interesting. Also I would like to cut here so that we don't get super loss. We have all the rumble for that. So what you would like to do at this point is put a compressor and again side chain it to if you make it even more interesting you can actually take the compressor that we have done in the rolling base and then put it here. And let's call it the layer. The layer what I feel at this moment is this is a bit too clean let's try to add a reverb and distort it afterwards and put another EQ on top of that cut this off a little bit put into the mono Same thing over here, right? We didn't do it, but we can definitely put this one to the mono, put the size a bit lower. Then if we take a look, let's solo this two only. Again, it doesn't affect too much, but I would definitely like to keep everything on the smaller side. We can even make sure that no, no information on the sub and is actually stereo, but I will come back to the point later. Let's fix that one first. Let's put a distortion 
course. Let's take all the dry. Put it somewhere around here. Make it darker. And let's put a utility. Decrease the gain. Group them up. So that we can do again AB. Yeah, it is this one is definitely much better for my ears and finally we put like we'd like to put one more eq here just to take a look what happens after all these distortions and reverbs so that we again don't overstep something like this right now we have to mix this one to the sound that we have here so let's take play around and see the optimal volume levels If you like to glue this one to this one, you can actually even put another compressor here. Let's duplicate this one and get it from the rolling base. And put it in the after post effects. Put a super low release, super fast attack. I didn't like it really. I feel like this sound could be a bit darker. Let's fix that up. Sorry, did I just... It should be here, basically. Let's keep this, if we do this one. AB. Okay, now I like it a bit more. What I feel like at the moment is actually, this is a bit too bright. Let's try to cut it a bit, cut a bit low so that we get this kind of darker feeling. This is, from my perspective, much better. And let's go back here and take a look at our levels again. Play it with everyone. Volume up. You can definitely see that they are coming closer, basically. But I feel like this is just overkill, so I will go back and make it the way before. There is one more thing that you can actually do. If you feel like you kind of need another transient for your delay kick, so what I mean is this one, or the rolling bass, You can pick another super short transient, kind of a darker one, not like a kick transient, but like a dark transient, and put it under the rolling base. And and we can definitely do that. And let me, or let's do that. Let's take a, another simpler here. And then we would like to find a loop, or if we would like kind of a sample, has kind of a nice transient in it. So again, if we go back to do our samples and here, I will definitely find that something from the percussion, I guess. This one could be, this may work. Maybe. I 
think the let's take the the one that we over there. This one I think is fine enough. What we're going to do actually put the kick sample here again. Let's solo this first. Good. Let's cut this. Let's see. Sound F sharp. I think the kick was F. It is not going to matter that much because we are going to shorten it this up now and make it a bit more transient, but anyway, you tune it, it's still good, I guess. Let's take one shot. And probably somewhere around here would be fine. So what we are going to do at the moment is use exactly the same uh, delay that we have in the rolling bass because this one we have layer to on top of that. So let's find the delay that we used here. But we are going to get somewhere around here. Like we are going to get aim or aiming for a bit like a middle end of the sun. Something like this. And then we of course would like to have again the same compressor that we used so that it has this kind of nice groove on it if we play all together now and then we can actually fix it a bit around the EQ and see how the sound sits One thing that we can do if we feel like we can make it a bit warmer, we can even, even add a pedal before the compressor probably. And just parallel process this one. Yeah, yeah and I think this that was it. Then we have our rolling kick and bass sound with nice layers and it is quite ambient quite big i will say and yeah uh, sorry i forget one thing it's always good to check your mono stereo capability but i would suggest if you don't want to do it one by one you can do this one for each channels actually you can also use just one eq8 in your in your group and then try to fix everything there which I'm going to do at this moment to keep this shorter so in EQ8 you would like to you will have this mid and side uh, option but this means that you can actually EQ the things based on the side on the mid so you can keep everything in the mid you don't need to filter anything but when it comes to the size you can actually put a high pass filter and filter the things out up to 200 300 hertz so that you are sure your sub and bass frequencies are on the mono and let's put this one around here and go to the side when you click this button here it switches to the sides so we are going to create this guy over here let's put into 4x and let's cut it around probably here i see that there's a transit over there something let's keep it here yeah there is not really too much difference between 
before and after and it is a really good thing that means that we already have most of the things actually in the mono for this area so that we don't have any problem uh, and when we cut it off it just worked pretty fine yeah but this time i think that was more or less what i want to talk for today and yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you learned something and until next time goodbye